here. So yeah, I think the next Disney remake should be The Black Cauldron. I'm sure my regular audience is familiar with this Disney classic, but for those of you who've never heard of it, I say, of course you haven't. Disney Studios is not proud of this one. Released in 1985, it didn't see a VHS release until 1998 and didn't appear on a digital video disc until the year 2000. It would be generous to say that Disney's 25th animated film wasn't their best. So before I explain why this should be remade, let's take a look at what went wrong with the original film. Lloyd Alexander, who wrote the two books the movie was based on, had this to say. First, there is no resemblance between the movie and the book. Having said that, the movie in itself, purely as a movie, I found to be very enjoyable. I think he's being kind here. Kinda like the anti-Alan Moore? The movie is pretty bad as a film. If you look at the main cast of characters, you have the hero, Hi, I'm Taran. You'll spend most of the movie being annoyed by me. At first, because of me acting like a whinier version of Luke Skywalker, and then because I get even more whiny when I lose my magic sword. The heroine. Hi, I'm Princess Ilonwi. I'm supposed to be quirky, but I come off as kind of dumb, and I'm completely irrelevant by the third act, except as a love interest for the hero you don't like. The comic relief. Great. Balin, I'm fl flu 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 de der flu flu de der de der flu flu de der flam. And I'm also dumb and annoying. You may mistake me at first for the old guy at the beginning, since we have the same character design. My main character trait is lying and st 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 hammering a lot. The other comic relief. Hi, I'm Gurgi. I'm a mix between Gollum and the Yorkie. And I'm here for great cloyings and annoyings. Then we have our bad guys. Skeletor and Gollum again, I guess? The villains are fairly bland. The Horn King is visually pretty cool, but his plan is fairly unclear other than Get Cauldron so I can be more eviler. Also, in an odd touch, the green obsequious fellow never gets his comeuppance. He's strangled by the Horned King so much you feel a bit sorry for him, but don't think that I'm gonna feel glad for you when you ride off on that Gwithaint creeper. I remember what you tried to do to my favorite pig. Speaking of which, the only compelling character in the whole flick was Henwen, the oracular pig. She's frickin' adorable. And when she's in danger, you feel it. Oh. Oh no. Jesus. No. Making her smaller and cuter is one of the only changes from the source material that I agree with, as she's a big fat white pig in the books. And when she does her soothsaying, you get the feeling it's kind of involuntary, which is a nice touch. In the books, you never actually see her hognosticate. <laughs> no? Hog? Hog? Right. It all happens off screen, so to speak. However, she gets ditched with the fair folk about halfway through and doesn't really do anything after that, so uh, whatever. If you haven't seen this movie, something you may be noticing from the clips is that it's a bit dark in tone. That's no accident. Disney Animation Studios was aiming this movie squarely at teenagers and included some pretty graphic imagery. Jesus Christ! some weirdly sexualized characters It's me love, and I'll die with a smile on my face. And more graphic imagery. <laughs> the 
There were reportedly test screenings of this movie where crying children had to be removed from the theater. All of that earned Black Cauldron the first PG rating awarded to an animated Disney movie. So between that and poor reviews, the movie only ended up earning half of its $44 million budget, making this another bomb for Disney, a devastating blow for the studio that was still reeling from the underwhelming performance of Return to Oz. Another children's movie, finger quotes, which received heavy criticism for being too dark. That's not to say there's nothing to like here, as long as you're not talking about the story or plot. The visuals are pretty impressive for the time, and apparently this was the first feature-length animation to use computer graphics. I mean, good luck finding out which ones they were. Uh, I think this one? Uh, maybe the background here? That green junk coming out of the cauldron doesn't look like it could have been hand-drawn. And this gate is CGI, I think. The effects around the Horn King are cool, but it looks like his face is a rat skull sometimes? Weird. Also, there seem to be a few odd visual references to A Sword in the Stone. Like this animation from the wolf in The Sword in the Stone compared to this much worse version of the same gag in Black Cauldron. And again, the magic used to pack up a house sequence is repeated for the three heads. Speaking of the hags, this scene where Fluder is turned into a frog and gets stuck in the fat one's cleavage is super uncomfortable. Uh, for me to edit into this video when someone could walk up and see it over my shoulder. For the teens! And speaking of uncomfortable, what does Disney have against brooms? What the? So now on to why I think this should be remade. Seriously, this one is ripe for a second try. My only thing about remakes is that they shouldn't be done if there's no room for improvement or if you have nothing new to say with the material. The Black Cauldron was a misfire right out of the gate. Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was chairman of Walt Disney Studios at the time, said that the movie lacked the humor, pathos, and fantasy which had been so strong in Lloyd Alexander's work. The story had been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and it was heartbreaking to see such wonderful material wasted. Brutal. Well, let's take another crack at it. For this video, I actually read the first two books that the film was based on and discovered a few things that could work out great for a new movie built on this franchise. Spoilers for the books Book of Three and The Black Cauldron. You should read them, though. I mean, they're worth a look. There are five books in the Tales of Prydain, so if the first remake works out, you could do four more films, so this property has legs if handled correctly. With that in mind, I think they should stick to the first book for the first movie. There's enough there for a feature-length film. One of the more interesting things about the books, in general, is the way they play with our perception of what a fantasy story should be, kind of like a light-hearted Game of Thrones. One of the bigger changes the movie made was to give Taran a magic sword that makes him an invincible warrior. In the book, Ilanwi is the one who robs the tomb, but after studying the sword, declares it too dangerous to actually handle, as only one of royal heritage should be able to use it, according to an inscription on the sword. So our heroes remain quite vincible. When cornered by the Horned King at the end of the story, Taran, in desperation, unsheaths the sword, and it nearly kills him. He doesn't turn out to be some kind of chosen one, and the tension of the story is never diffused by some magic relic. If anything, carrying something around with them that could kill the whole party if they use it amps up the tension. The second big thing that needs to change is the character of Ilanwi. In the movie, as I said before in that terrible girl-female accent thing I was doing, she comes off as a bit of a dunce. The trouble was they used one of her character traits, her motor mouth, but left behind the fact that she was an aspiring sorceress and was being trained by the mistress of the castle Terran got himself imprisoned in. That's why she was able to move around the secret passageways. She lived in the castle and knew it really well. Uh, she decided to help Terran to spite her evil aunt. I, I 
think it was her aunt, um, as she wasn't very fond of her. Ilanwe also used some spells and fought with bow and arrow alongside everyone else and refused to take any of Taran's crap when he suggests that she be left behind for her own safety. She is a strong female character mixed with a pixie dream girl. She's a great foil for the serious protagonist, and the two argue as much as they work together. I would keep some of the changes that the movie made to Henwin, the pig. Keep her small and cute. Whatever danger she's put in throughout the story will seem even greater if it's happening to Babe, Pig in the City. One of the two main plot points of the book is trying to track down Henwin, and she ends up playing a pivotal role in the climax, so I'd make sure that was reflected in the new movie. It was weird when she just got ditched. The next thing that should be fixed is the fair folk that she got ditched with. This was a huge missed opportunity. In the book, the fair folk are not just fairies, but all kinds of magical humanoids. Dwarves, sprites, elves, fairies, dryads, all of it. All living together in a series of underground tunnels so immense that the human characters visiting it feel like they're above ground. In the cartoon version, they're all just generically designed fairies. It, is that a boy fairy in a Tinkerbell outfit? And these annoying little ones, one of whom has the same speech impediment as the baby rabbit from Robin Hood. Robin Hood of Sweethearts. With the technology available to filmmakers today, this sequence could be truly stunning. I could go on and on. Almost everything is better in the source material, except Gurgi, who is just as annoying no matter where he shows up. Though slightly less so in the book. I know there are fans of this character, but I personally don't get it. I, I mean, whatever. We can keep him, I guess. <laughs> Happy day. Final thoughts. I love the idea of remaking a movie that needs to be remade, and since this was a botched adaptation of a pretty great story, it should be given another look. And I most certainly agree. Aw, Archimedes always has my back. I get it though. It's not as easy a call as remaking The Lion King. But we need to start the healing process. First with Song of the South. Go check out that video. Then with Black Cauldron. So, Disney execs, and I'm sure you're listening, do that movie one more time. But this time, let's actually read the source material, huh? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, share it with your friends. I don't mind, really. Like it if you like it, or even if you don't. I don't think anyone really checks to see if you're being truthful or not. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified the next time I order Disney to defuse a bomb they made, and leave a comment and let me know what movie you think they should remake next. Next week, I plan on taking a look to the future to a remake that they are doing one more time. Here's a hint. Until then, you know what to do.